Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to change your outer tie rod. This here is my 1999 Toyota 4Runner SR5 four wheel drive. So just now my vehicle has approached 200,000 miles and recently I did the lower ball joint um, and when doing that and reinstalling it I accidentally squished all the grease out of my old tie rod um, when using my puller because I really pressed down on the spoon it all just oozed out and the other ones are pretty shot, pretty flat, pretty rusty. I'm sure they could still uh, take me to 300000 but I just want to replace it. I think they were $100 each. Everyone recommended either OEM or Moog. Uh, you can hop on Rock Auto and buy some cheap ones, but I figured, hey, these other ones lasted 20 years, so might as well just spend the extra 50 bucks and get one that should last, you know, another 50 years. Some people argue that 90s Toyota quality was a lot better than today. But, like I said, I just, I prefer OEM just because it always just fits right and the tolerances are a lot tighter versus all these Chinese Duralast parts. One thing to note is they are right and left specific, so you'll want to order two. Here's the part number for the left side, driver's side here in America, 45047-39215, and you can find it. And like I said, that'll come with the outer tie rod. Comes with a brand new castle nut and a brand new OEM cotter pin. And here's the part number for the right side, passenger side. You can start by going towards the rear of the vehicle. Find this little strap, pull straight up, and your spare jack and everything will be in here if you don't have a jack to work with. This here's the OEM jack that comes with it, part number 09111-60075. But one thing to know is it actually gives you a picture of where to jack it up, so that's kind of nice. So if we go towards the front of the vehicle, there's going to be that little crossbar. Um, it says not to jack it up on the outer circle, but the inner circle, so let's get it into place. And then next, go inside your cabin and pull your e-brake up. What that'll do is lock the rear wheels so that they don't roll back when you have it in the air. So I'm now under the vehicle. As you can see there on the plastic, it says jacking point. I have my jack on the ground. And there's this large oval shape, I'm actually going to go kind of towards the left because that's where that cross member bar is that goes all the way to the other side. And here you can take your other two pieces of the jack, they simply connect together just like this. You can tighten this little screw, then under there just go hook into the jack and raise it up till the tire is an inch off the ground. And I like to throw a jack stand under there just for safety and lower the jack slightly so that the load is evenly distributed between the jack and the jack stand. Now we can remove the tire, you need a 21 millimeter socket. Now that the lug nuts are off, sometimes the tire will be stuck on there so you just have to give it a swift kick. And I always put the tire under the vehicle as an added layer of protection. And here's the part we're going to be replacing, so we're going to need to um, back this locking bolt off. Then we're going to need to remove the cottering pin, remove the castle nut, unscrew this. And now we need to go ahead and break this nut loose. So I'm going to grab onto it. It's a 27 millimeter. And so here I have an adjustable wrench. Some people like to use a pipe wrench. And I'm going to put something on this one to prevent that from spinning. All right, so what I've done is I've taken my 27 millimeter adjustable wrench and I put it on that back nut. So as I twist this bolt to loosen, uh, this wrench will stop this whole outer control arm from spinning. And now I was able to get this nut to unspin. So let's go ahead and continue to hold the arm and back this off about four turns. All right, now we have a gap between those two. So let's work on the castle nut and cottering pin. So it's important to remove this bolt second. Um, the reason is because if you remove this, this entire thing will spin when you're trying to break this loose. And I learned that the hard way on the other side. So let's first go ahead and remove our cottering pin. So let's grab some pliers and mangle that out of there. So as you can see, I've straightened that cottering pin out. Let's go ahead and push it out the other side. And voila. And then your castle nut is going to be a 19 millimeter. So go ahead and put that on there and let's blast that out. And just like that, you can see that it came out. And here's what that old rusty castle nut looks like. All right, next we need to separate this from this piece. In theory, it should just slide straight down, but it's obviously a little tight and a little rusty. You can get in the car and move the steering wheel back and forth, see if that helps. A lot of people recommend hitting it here, but these are brand new lower ball joints and I really just don't want to take a hammer to them. I don't want to accidentally hit my brake dust shield and bend it. So I always have good luck with these tie rod pullers. Just so this year I got from O'Reilly Auto Parts. Uh, unfortunately, the part number's ripped off, but it's six, seven something, and they have two sizes. All you need is the smaller one, and this is great. It just pops right off, super simple. So I can kind of move that out of the way. 
and here you just put it right here. No, it will squish out the stuff out of your boot, so this might not be the best method if you're actually doing a lower ball joint job and plan on replacing these. So just be aware of that, because that's kind of how I squished all the grease out of my boot last time when doing my lower ball joints. Let's go ahead and put some tension on that. And this is like the perfect size. I don't know if it's universal size or Toyota size, but it just works really, really well. All right, so I've got that hand tight, and let's put the impact uh, full torque and just pop that off. And set in your drill to tighten. And if you're wondering, this is the Milwaukee 2767-20. Um, it's a pretty big impact. I believe it's 1,400 foot-pounds. So this definitely turns, uh, you know, hour-long jobs into quick 20-minute sessions. And looking at this old part, as you can see, the boot is pretty flat. The grease is leaking out of it. And the only other thing I noticed between this old one, this new one, is this one. It doesn't have a ton of play to the point I'm concerned, but the other one is a lot stiffer to move, so hopefully it should give us a slightly smoother ride. And also this car needs an alignment, and I think with this uh, new bushing full of grease, it'll help us get a better alignment because this car is always pulled slightly to the right. But obviously, like I said, I need more suspension work. So pick this straight up. Um, just so it's level and count the number of turns that it comes out so that way you can thread the new one in the same number of turns and get a semi even alignment and be able to drive to your local shop for an alignment so there's one full rotation two full rotations so here's the old part versus the new part as you can see they're they seem to be identical this boot has a lot more grease and those uh, metal bearings that lock in the grease they look pretty solid um, the threads look the same we got the hole for the cotter pin the threads and pitches look the same we have an L here for left um, the other one had an R for right this says two this is number four I'm not sure what that means but we should be fine and unfortunately when ordering this new component um, I couldn't find a part number or the size for this nut so I'm gonna be reusing it it looks rusty on the outside but I'm sure the threads are clean since it was smooth so take our old one and thread this off. Looks like it's going to fight me a little, so I'm going to take a metal wire brush to the threads as well as maybe some lubricant to try to slide this off with my wrench. And just like that, it's now off. The threads don't appear to be damaged, just dirty, so I'm going to put a metal wire brush and some parts cleaner in there. And then, no, it is side-specific. As you can see, there's this side where you could put a socket on, but this side you couldn't because there's this lip that runs around it. So this lip is going to touch that way because that's the part that locks and touches the mating surface. Next, let's take our new tie rod. As you can see, it looks like there's some oil from the factory, but let's go ahead and apply some anises. So I've applied my anises here. Um, I know it looks patchy, but there's reason for that. Next, take your nut, go ahead and uh, thread that on, and that'll actually even out the coat of anises that we just applied. All right, and that was about, uh, so since this takes 19 threads to twist back into the relative place, I spun this on about 22 times. Next, let's go ahead and line up the hole, make sure there's no gunk in there. If you have a shop towel, maybe kind of brush out the debris if there is anything, and let's thread this straight in. So I'm going to go in 19 times. Your number may have been different. There's 19 for me. So now we can let that hang. Now let's go ahead and tighten up this nut. Um, obviously you want to get that on pretty tight, but... So that's just semi-tight, but next I actually want to put this back into place to give us more leverage to tighten this nut. Move this out of the way. Go ahead and push this up and back into place. You can kind of rotate it. Just like that. Yeah. This, it'll help if you push on it. Help line it up so it's vertical. The torque spec is 67 foot-pounds, so let's grab our torque wrench. And sometimes as you're tightening this, the bolt inside will begin to spin. So that's why I like to use an impact and then uh, snug it up with the torque wrench. One, two, three. When you hear the click, hold it for three seconds. Do it again. One, two, three, and that's now torqued properly. One thing to know is that the hole needs to align with the castle, so in our case it's totally offline. So let's go ahead and just tighten this a little more till that hole shows through and we can shove the cotter pin through. You can see here that hole is lined up with the castle nut. Go ahead and slide this in. 
And from here, grab your pliers and bend it around. There, and I wrapped that around the top as well as around the side. That's how it originally was when I first took this apart. But you can do really probably any pattern you want. And then next, you gotta say the magic word of that ain't going nowhere. Give it a few taps. Once again, this is starting to spin. I don't want that, so I need to hold that. All right, so once again, um, I put the pliers here so that's locked. So as I spin this, this whole boot and nut doesn't spin with it. I'm gonna put my pipe wrench on right here. Go ahead and tighten this. Uh, this is the point where I really wish I had a lift because there's not enough leverage because my wrench is too tall to get on there and do a complete rotation. So we just gotta uh, do what we can. Okay, I've got that locked on there. Let's give it a good twist. All right, that's pretty tight. I saw this whole arm flexing. Now let's go ahead and straighten out the steering wheel, put your key in the ACC position, or you could go as far as starting the vehicle and just turning the steering wheel. Next, make sure to dispose of your old cotter pin. You don't want that getting in your tire, leaving it in the road. And put your tire on, push it flush against the hub. Always start these by hand so you don't cross thread them and using an impact. And then next we want to give them a few ugga duggas each. The torque spec is anywhere from uh, 78 to 80 foot pounds. Um, it just depends what you read, but I know the torque spec. So let's go ahead and remove our jack stand and lower the jack. And make sure to put your jack away just so you have it for next time. So as you can see, the jack has its own location. You raise it up a hair just so it doesn't rattle around. And your tools go in this little pouch. And then there's this little locking rubber band. As well as that longer piece we used here. It goes here, and this way, and then this way. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, like I said, I'm going to drive it straight to the alignment shop. It's only about a block away, so I'm not worried that the alignment might be off. Uh, but I'm going to get it in this morning, and I'm going to tell them that I replaced the lower ball joints as well as the outer tie rods, and that those outer tie rod locking nuts that I put the pipe wrench on could be just a hair loose, so if they could just tighten those up, and hopefully it's less than 100 bucks. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.